This is Poochie Hair with another segment of Rip Your Swag. We're here with our chef and my co-host. Serious Hill. So, and chef. Chef Roderick here at Dreamers Cafe. Yes, we'll be coming right back to you after the small book. This is the day when I finish the race. I make it somehow, no matter how long it takes. All right, thanks for staying tuned. Um, as far as Chef, we're going to try to find out where is like originally where she started from to get to where she at now. So Chef, uh, where are you originally from? I was born in Newark, New Jersey, but I was raised here in Dallas. So like, how long you been in Dallas? Uh, over 30 years. Oh, so yeah, you're just Dallas native now. I am. Okay, so um, what, um, when you came to Dallas, like how about what age range would you? So my family moved down here. So it's, it's real funny. My mom is from Jersey and she just didn't believe that she didn't want her kids to be born here. So she would go back home and have the kid, us, me and my sister, and then they would come back. But then they stayed up there for a little while and then they ended up just making Dallas their home. So I've been here since I was a kid. Okay. All my family's still in Jersey on my mom's side. Cool. So what kind of got you into the industry that you're in now? Food service, um, <clears throat> I've always been passionate for food because I like creativity and I am very particular about my food. Gotcha. So when I was seven, uh, my grandmother uh, used to allow me to cook on Saturday mornings because we would have fish fry Fridays um, at her house and she was the queen of our neighborhood. So everybody would come to her house for the fish fry, but she would get so wasted that Saturday morning she couldn't cook for us her five grandkids, a true story. So we had an agreement that I would cook, so she would buy the breakfast stuff and I would cook for my cousins. And um, I would make all their food one at a time and they would go play and I would be stuck in the house cleaning up and then feeding myself. So food was a way for me to stay connected because at this point my family was divorced, but this was my family on my dad's side. Okay. So I started freehand cooking at that age. Okay, so, so kind of like a, um you said your parents were divorced, mm -hmm. so kind of cooking was kind of like an outlet for you. To it kind of cope kept with me you. connected. Gotcha. Kept me connected with my family because my mom has no family down here. Remember, she left, so my only family was my dad's family. Gotcha. Yep. So, growing up, you cooking already and stuff. What was the first thing that you remember cooking? Breakfast. <laughs> um, because <Egg. laughs> breakfast, no, <laughs> it wasn't just eggs. They all ate different, and mm -hmm. they still all eat different. It was five of us. My sister my cousin, her brother, and then my little cousin. So I would start off with asking them. Um, usually it was a simple breakfast, so we would have pancakes, eggs, and a meat. So one cousin likes thick pancakes, my sister liked thin pancakes, one cousin liked pancakes in the middle, not thick, not thin, so I would make all their pancakes, and then I'd get the egg order. I felt like, I, as an adult now, I realized I was like a Waffle House short order cook. Cause I would make all their stuff. Like my sister like crispy bacon. My other cousin wants the sausage, and then my other cousin wants the fat on the bacon. So I would make all their stuff one at a time, and plate it. They eat. So, it's it's basically like not to the left, not to the right, but right in the middle. That part. So as far as when you're trying to accommodate everybody that's on both sides you have to do a extra crispy you have to do an extra soggy and like how does that feel like that they help you now it gave me a understanding of creativity because with having all of my my cousins that close to me i was the second to the last um as it relate to age um and because they they bonded differently like my sister and my cousin were very girly so they were very close my boy cousin, he was in his own world, and my little cousin was like his little mentor. So I was just kind of, you know, I'm I'm not girly, but I'm not a boy. So I was I was kind of like, you know, the displaced right the in misfit. the middle. <laughs> yeah, that, that part. So when it came to connecting with them and their food preference, it allowed me to understand what customers are like. Mm -hmm. I didn't realize that then, but I just knew I wanted them to be happy. Yeah. So I didn't make all the food the same. And then, so now, um, fast forward to my reality, if you look at my menu, 
there is a portion of my menu that allows freedom of creation. It's the build your own part of my menu. Because for people like myself who are very particular, I, I hate going to a place and I see something great, but I want to change it. And it's, oh, well, there's a substitution fee for this, there's this, oh, you can't take that. that. So in my menu, you can have whatever you want on that part. You don't have to tell me what you don't want. You just tell me what you want. Because I'm okay with accommodating that. I'm, I'm okay with the particulars. So I think, you know, that engagement very early on, that customer satisfaction, it ties into what I do right now. Okay. So take it back just a little bit. At first it started, like, as a connection type deal. Um, what made you, like, want to bring it into where it is now, like, you know, as far as the industry part of it, what made you want to, like, make money doing it instead of, Ooh, that was a long journey. I actually didn't go into food service as a professional until I didn't graduate and get my culinary degree until 20, 2014. Uh, at that point in my life, I was married, three children, uh, one in high school and two adolescents, and I went back to culinary school. I've always um, catered for people personally because cooking has been my freedom of expression. Um, it wasn't until I ended up deciding I wanted to create a career with my passion. So I went back to culinary school and took over. After I graduated, I was exposed to a Canadian group that has um, a franchise across the UAE. And they put me over one of their Italian restaurants and it exposed me to a different market. My, my restaurant was in. So being exposed to the different market and the customer clientele that I had at that restaurant, um, my restaurant was at Highland Park and I was running an Italian restaurant and it brought me to see a different, um, a different market, a different line of work and being there, my opportunities started to open. Um, I was offered a job to go to Australia. I was offered a job to run a Highland Park private school um, meal contract, and I ended up taking a job in Cedar Hill. And the job I took in Cedar Hill, I ended up teaching culinary school to high school students, and working with those students made me realize that I needed to create a, a different avenue of food service for our students on this side of the tracks, this side of 75. So it was my exposure to the food service um, at its fullness in my career. Um, and then seeing students with great passion and great gifts and nowhere to showcase them, that I decided to do my own thing. Okay. okay. So we're gonna take a small break right now and we'll be back shortly. This is the day when I go all the way. I make it my own and say, here's to the dreamers. So we're back with the chef. Chef, how long have you been at this location? So it made a year, October 25th, that we got our keys. We did our first soft opening on November 1st, so it's been a year. Okay. So as you can see now, I'm over here trying out the food, and uh, um, I'm totally obsolete in this video right now because I'm concentrating on the plate, but. The plate that I got is a special on the menu. You have to come check it out. We'll probably talk about it here later. But um, as far as um, you cooking, and we know that you have a passion, you like to critique things and stuff. So if um, a person had a catering or, you know, something that they wanted you to do, uh, do you do catering? 
We cater. We do anything related to food. We do private events, baby showers, birthday parties. We cater weddings. We do meal prep. If it is involves food, we do it. Okay. Um, it's just a matter of basically scheduling what you need, mm -hmm. making sure you fit in my schedule. We do go to the highest bidder, first come, first serve. So um, I'm available for all events as long as you make it on my books. Okay. So as far as when you, um, what is the one that you always, like a meal that you prep? I know that you probably put your all into every meal, but one that you just be like, this is my favorite. My favorite hasn't even been exposed yet. Okay. <laughs> my favorite meal um, to actually prepare is my signature dish. And um, January the 10th is my birthday. And we're going to release that on my birthday, January the 10th. Okay. So we just started the planning and marketing for that today. It's um, I'll share with you since you guys are on my menu. I haven't actually told anybody else or any of the vlogger that I've interviewed with. But... Um, there is one thing that happens in culinary school that's like um, the, the hype of being in professional culinary school. Um, every student in each class, whether it's um, dining room services, uh, international, regional on your class, each student gets to be the lead chef. And while I was in college, one of my colleagues had Morocco as his country, mm -hmm. and our chef would not allow him to prepare, prepare wings and it's an authentic dish to that culture, um, the, the spices that he was going to make and everything. And so he was so disappointed. And, you know, we had this conversation, like, Chef, why can't he do it? Like, it goes with the, you know, it's authentic to the culture. And he's like, because it's fine dining, and if it's not fork friendly, you can't serve it. So it has to be, you have to be able to eat it with a fork and knife. Mm -hmm. So it bothered me because anything people tell me I can't do, I figure out, like, I how I'm going to make this it. happen. Yeah. Yes, right. uh, I just don't believe that I can't do anything. So I went and I spent some time um, practicing my knife skills with the wing. Mm -hmm. And I taught myself how to debone a wing okay. whole, leaving it intact. And I took it and stuffed it with jambalaya in some and macaroni and cheese in the other. And then I cooked it to where it was whole and I get plated up with um, a mound of my jambalaya and I serve it with salmon egg rolls and beignets with cream cheese icing with a flambe. It's probably my favorite meal to make. So you make beignets? I do. Oh, you're almost there. <laughs> <laughs> almost there, I am. So as far as, um, do you have like a top three that like bring your customers in? Like as far as like if your regulars come in, like people tell you this is the reason I come here. Yes, my jambalaya. Okay. is probably our most uh, frequent purchase. Um, my Cajun pasta, which is our linguine pasta with our house-made Cajun cream, um, topped with the uh, grilled shrimp, our spicy sausage links, and chicken. Um, excuse me, it comes with peppers and onions, so that's very popular. And then the Build Your Own is very popular. I have a lot of picky people that appreciate that freedom of creation. And I like having that availability because so many people on different trend diets and they trend and really aren't true to that diet. So I have people that come in and say, I'm vegan, but I want shrimp. Right. You're not vegan at all, but I'm not going to argue with you because you're going to pay me. So right. the freedom of creation is, is probably my favorite uh, thing to add to my menu. We have so many uh, food purveyors throughout the community that have fixed menus. And the fixed menu works for the business. But for people like me who like to create and you know customize my meal, it doesn't give me the freedom to do that without having to pay extra or a la carte. So my menu allows that. So you can be vegan, keto, you know, vegetarian, pescatarian, fakeitarian. We don't care. Just, whatever, Just make up whatever, whatever you like. Whatever they need, you got. That is true. <laughs> gotcha. I mean the meatitarian. Oh, we have that too. Okay. You just keep so, ordering the protein. <laughs> Six fifty per protein. They so, say, "How many can you have? How many you want to pay for?" The um, the other thing um, that I know that you're uh, keen on is um, as far as I was gonna ask you what's different between you and the other, but I don't want to get into that. I want to just get into like as far as your menu and how you prepare and how you set up because like you're on a line with a lot of fast food places. And, you know, sometimes, yeah, that's fine and dandy to get and stuff, whatever, but it's not as far as health beneficiary for you and stuff. And basically, what do you do as far as health-wise? So, um, being health conscious for this community is very important to me. Um, one of the things that I um, 
I take pride in is the creativity with food and I respect what food does for the body. Mm -hmm. um, my first degree is actually in hemopathic medicine. I'm one year away from graduating. So okay. my passion for food ties into my passion for natural medicines and what the body can do with the proper fuel. Mm -hmm. So um, I always want to provide those res the, that product that available to my customers for a balanced diet. Mm -hmm. um, and that's keeping fresh produce. We make everything fresh to order. Um, I tell people that this is not fast food. In most of the low-income communities, which this is one, Oak Cliff, is a low-income community in this area, we have almost uh, most of the fast food companies here yes. available to our consumers. Um, but we are directly across the street from the Veterans Medical Hospital, which we have doctors and nurses and nurse practitioners who understand the value of food, who have nowhere to patronize you know, to accommodate their their Indeed. palate. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm here for everyone, but I also want to make sure that the consumers who don't have the variety that they would like mm -hmm. available, I would like to make sure that we at least have that represented in our area. So we make sure that all of our produce is fresh. Um, we make everything to order. I have no food holding. Um, <clears throat> we don't do any of the fake um, meats. We stick to raw produce, um, fresh produce, mm -hmm. and balancing those meals so that people can actually allow their bodies to absorb whole, nu absorb whole nutrients. Mm -hmm. yes. Yeah. So that's kind of cool to me because so basically, like, you could take somebody like me that doesn't really care as long as it tastes good, I'm eating it. You know, on down to somebody that, you know, like a professional athlete can come in here and, like, that's more particular about his diet. You got all that from A to Z. The craziest yeah. thing is I do have athletes. Anybody who wants to uh, change something different. Okay. All right. So here we are for to come up on another break, and we'll be back shortly. For this last part of our segment, we're going to uh, ask to the questions as far as, um, like, what basically from here, like, from everything that you came to work on, you, you, the traveling that you made it to Dallas, now that you're in Dallas, the setup that you have, like, what's next on your agenda? What plan do you have? Oh, so Dreamers is an extension of a bigger vision. Mm -hmm. Um, I am a female entrepreneur. I am a female restaurant owner. All of these things, being a female in business and being a black female in business, play a huge role in my big vision. Um, it is extremely hard for women in food service. People don't understand that um, the things that we go through do not equate to the things that men go through in food service. Uh, when we started this project. Um, my business partner and I had a vision for starting a new wave to open different doors in business. So Dreamers is the first extension of that vision. The ultimate goal is to make Dreamers an eatery. Um, there are eateries in other communities that allow for a product to be made that fit the community that it's in. Um, packaged uh, for heat and eat purposes, mm -hmm. as well as they serve hot food. And once we get to that level, if I have 60% of our product packaged, ready to go, we can actually start receiving or selling to customers who have EBT. Um, so ultimately the goal is to turn this particular spot into an eatery so that we can bridge the gap between those people who are struggling or on, on EBT at that time and they can get balanced meals, food that they that that they may like as opposed to, you know, other alternatives. Um, but the long term goal is to open a restaurant, um, fine dining in a community that um, showcases the foods that I like. Um, I've traveled a bit. Um, my palate is uh, very cultured. I like foods from all cultures, which is why I don't put a um, 
I don't put borders on what the build your own can be. You can make it Asian, you can make it Creole, you can do whatever you want to it. Um, because I cook all styles of food. Okay. And um, so the ultimate goal is to get a get us to a place to where we can open a fine dining restaurant, but get dreamers this part of our vision where it is in its capacity serving the community on the heat and eat side as well as the hotline side. Um, so that's our, our bigger vision. Okay. So um, you were saying that you don't really put borders on, so to do a puffy fish, how would you put in order for that? 24 hour notice. 24 hour notice. Yes, anything that's not on my menu that you would like, i.e. gumbo that takes two hours, mm -hmm. um, or anything, oxtails, uh, you just let me know 24 hours ahead of time. And if it's product that I can get, we don't mind cooking it. Okay, so um, the other one was as far as um, getting, like, I mean, as far as location and stuff, the I'm trying to figure out how I'm trying to say this, right? Okay, so when someone comes to you and be like, you know, to critique a meal and stuff, right? And they want it this way, that way and stuff. Um, do that still goes into putting it in 24 hours or do you just... Not if it's product um, that we have available. What I mean by that is my menu has specific items on it mm -hmm. because I have to maintain access to those for daily operation. Um, that's going to be my proteins, the chicken, the seafood, the meatballs, um, shrimp, things like that. Um, we have here readily available to use. But if you order something like oxtails that I don't keep on hand because beef doesn't sell very often out of my location, mm -hmm. um, I forecast and um, kind of watch the traffic when I first opened mm -hmm. to see what the consumers wanted. And right now, seafood and veggies are trending uh, for my customers. Um, I can't speak for other restaurants, but for my customers, the seafood is trending. I don't keep product that's gonna go to waste because I'm not gonna sell it, so I don't keep it here. Um, but my customers know that I'm gonna accommodate whatever request it takes to get your money. So if you give me 24 hour notice, I'll make sure that I get the product. If it's something I have access to, um, I have a customer that likes chili randomly, and he was a part of my chili tasting when we first started. Um, we have several chili trophies over there, if y'all want to <laughs> admire. Okay. Me and Mommy want some trophies, but he'll come and order chili a day in advance. He'll come order on a Monday and say, I want chili Tuesday at 1130. Okay. We're okay with that. So earlier when we was talking about as far as, you know, the things that you come, that you overcome, and as far as uh, for the future, you were saying that you're trying to like basically pave a way for other people, you know, for women exactly because they're sometimes kind of shunned out of the industry of cooking. Not necessarily shunned. Well, well, what I'm asking is as far as like for somebody that's coming up that, you know, want to pursue that or do it, what advice would you give them? Don't let anybody stop your dreams. Um, being a female and making a decision to take a business role is a sacrifice that most women put on the back burner because of our responsibilities, whether it is our commitment to our spouses, our children, our family, our parents, all of the things that we take on as nurturers. Um, we each were born with purpose and vision and dreams. I have noticed a trend in my journey, just in my, my little journey, that there are other women who have such great talent and that talent is not being used or used in a way that that passion becomes commerce because we are so stretched thin in our obligations to the people that we love. Um, because of my journey and what it took for me to get here, I allow my platform to be used for those women. So if I know a woman that has, <clears throat> does food different from me, um, eventually the consignment ship that I'm creating will allow them to house their product here on the chill, the heat and eat side. They can create a brand um, and their brand can be sold from here to my platform. If they have a retail, if they have clothing, um, we, we're planning on turning the restaurant into an auction next year um, where we auction off different things and packages. We have some vendors that have signed up to contract with us to offer services uh, that we can raffle off um, to expose people to different businesses that are here locally. Mm -hmm. There is a spa in Oak Cliff. I don't know if anybody's heard about it, but it's woman-owned and black-owned. Mm -hmm. um, there is a limo service here. 
um, that gentleman has offered to um, volunteer, donate services to us to be a part of our raffle. Um, there are a lot of businesses that are coming up, but marketing is everything, as you know, and then having the right support group to put you in places so that you can actually capitalize on whatever service you offer. Since I am in a place right now where I do have a storefront in brick and mortar and I have the attention of a huge variety of cultures across the street because the VA Medical Center yes. here is the only one in the FW that yes. all armed forces have to go through and they travel, they're cultured. I have a lot of customers over there that will, I have regulars that come and say, hey, chef, just create me something because they've eaten in so many places. They, they're they okay with the variety palette and there is nowhere else they can do that. Um, with that said, once we have the attention of them, then whoever has you know quality services that want this, to be able to promote their business and I want to be able to provide an avenue for those people as well. So. Um, it's more than just about food. Um, it's more than just about just my business. Um, this journey has not been easy for me. Um, I took a lot of hits. So if I can make it easier for another female that wants to start a business, wants to get to the next level, need the support, need guidance, I want to be able to extend that olive branch. So okay. that's what we do. Okay. Um, well, it's been nice hearing your story. Um, had a lot of fun doing it. But uh, the final question, is how do you rep your swag, Chef? Oh, how do I rep my swag? Being authentically me. I am a dream catcher. Um, my restaurant is based on the fact that everything that I've ever done has started with a dream. Um, everything that I ever go against has been above the statistics that were supposed to make me all of those things that the hood is supposed to make you and representing that in a way that others can see and be proud of and aspire to be. So I do it by just being me, the and best version of that. That's how you rep your swag. And you lean, and you lean. Lean, and you lean. Yes, yes. We so um, with that being said, um, thank y'all for stay, uh, watching our cast and uh, stay tuned for our next but at the same time make sure you stay tuned to the credits to make sure you know the location of the store and the menu so that way you can know if you don't have uh, you know a taste for it, something different check out the menu and come on down this is Poochie Hell and Serious Hell and the real Chef Duke and we're here with the Hell Twins Hell Twins home <laughs> <laughs> Ha <laughs>
Walkie talkie. 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 Walkie I do want y'all to know I'm getting bloopers. Oh. So <laughs> <laughs> I want one. We got what do page. I get? You get a pager. You know what I'm saying? So that way with the I keep trying to go back, but my, my business partner won't let me. I want a page. I actually don't yeah. want a cell phone. They keep buying me phones. I keep breaking and losing. All right. Test over. A, B, C, D, oh my God. E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, O, M, N, O. Hey, uh, <laughs> if I could change the letters of the alphabet, I'd put U and I together. What? Yes. So, I come in, and I'll be like, uh-huh, and I, get, I did balance. So, uh, really? one, two, so three. Don't. 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 And don't bang on the table. You must have. I'm sorry. <laughs> three. Three. We're on three, y'all, to get the last minute out. Two. Wait. Oh, she's I'm sorry. Are oh, we going for a We're going for bloopers. Oh, sorry. No, we got you all up in there. <laughs> Cause you know when the doo, 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 doo. okay we're here. Uh, uh, Only fans coming soon. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Why are you looking like me? Hey everybody! <laughs> this segment we're gonna be talking to Chef. <laughs> <laughs> what are you laughing? This No, 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 no. I was trying to, I was just thinking on like how, because you was like, we finna get ready to come in. So I was like, I was thinking on how we was going to come in. Like, as far as. <laughs> okay, go ahead. Five, four. Hey, welcome to Rip Your Swag. I'm Poochie Hill. I'm serious, Hill. We recorded. Why the hell are you looking at her? She recorded. Yo, mama. <laughs> Sit over here and you sit here. Trust I do women. trust her, you but don't. two, you four don't. eyes is better than two. She got like, two, four. That part. You're perfect. Okay. You're perfect. Put your head into this crybaby. Just do what you they told you. I have time for this shit. And you got your hell twin that back you up. Rip your swag and act like the professional you are. Get this stuff together. I Show chef that this is I not just, our first rodeo. I just didn't mm. think I was in there. That's why I kept leaning you in. You don't need to lean nowhere. Trust your team. You got not this. All right, let's go. You a veteran at this. Let's go. Uh, and you, uh -oh. you're <laughs> this. 
But I need more than it. serious hell. Uh, uh oh. Yeah, you a little boring. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah. yeah. beat you. Boring. Come on. I need to be lying. Uh, don't kick your leg up. But come on. <laughs> hey, hey, it's serious hell hey, over here. Yeah. Shorten it. Yeah. And you. No. <laughs> <laughs> I'm serious. Oh, I love it. <laughs> I'm, I'm serious. <laughs> <laughs> Can we have some music? Is it supposed to be? Is it gonna be this dry? Music, yeah. Okay, all right. The bottom line of this, y'all, this is to feature the shape. So y'all make her comfortable. I know she. Oh, she's comfortable. She's at the house. But y'all, every question y'all ask is to be able to let people know who she is, what she's about, because we want people to pay attention. We want them to, you know, they say they don't laugh. Three. Y'all ready? <laughs> Never would have been here. So <laughs> sometimes you gotta work to work. You know what I'm saying? So, um, uh, um, serious? Um, <clears throat> on the spot? <laughs> I feel like got put way on the spot. <laughs> I asked you questions. Did you, you forget you were here? I, I forgot my question. I forgot. I forgot. <laughs> Why are you so damn red? Come down. <laughs> <laughs> you forgot you were here. <laughs> he was like, <laughs> wow. What made you get into the restaurant? I had it in my head, and then he was he like, serious? And I was like, boop. <laughs> 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 like, oh, damn, I'm being fucked up again. <laughs> All right. Good. <laughs> oh, no. You want me to slide Okay, so starting this thing, we're going to uh, ask her a few questions to find out basically a history from her. So, uh, Dallas. <laughs> Wait a minute. Can you stop? You have to get it together. <laughs> <laughs> you were supposed to coach him and stroke his balls before he got here. Like, really? <laughs> this man's so tense. <laughs> Come give him a hug or something. You know, like pre K. <laughs> Drop the kids off at school. I'm sorry. Like, <laughs> I'm sweating. <laughs> you want a stripper? Mom! <laughs> we need a stripper! Uh oh. oh no. She's 60. She only takes off her glasses. Y'all are sick. Okay. <laughs> oh no, don't get pushed in Okay. Are you okay? I'm good. She know okay, what she's doing. <laughs> <laughs> I just think you know how pre-K they just need encouragement. It's sweaty. Okay, Ryan, do you know what your question is? I know my question. <laughs> I got one shot. Don't come to me no more. You got this. This <laughs> said three. You got oh this. God. You only asked one. Back and forth. It's like oh. tennis. <laughs> He's had oh. all shit. I <laughs> Immediately, as soon as you ask the question, back to me. I gotta me. answer it, but you gotta wait. Let me answer. Yeah, so don't ask all your questions. Why y'all put you. this pressure on him like this? Okay. Oh, no. okay. You have your own restaurant. Okay. And is this your mm -hmm. first location? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. You can't. <laughs> you want to pee and write them on your head. You be like, uh, uh ooh. You need a pen? So. <laughs> We need a teleprompter. Yeah, Ellen got no cards. It's okay. <laughs> okay, here we go. Wait, I have it's a my wait. <laughs> 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 we get to stop every time it's your turn to ask a question. It's going to be the longest bloopers in history. Okay. How many locations have you had? Is this your first location? She's going to lose it. She's going to lose it. She's going to be thinking about the past. <laughs> Right, right. And <laughs> she can't. Really? She can't. 
Okay. So how long you been? <laughs> how, many, how many locations? No, no. How long you been in this industry? Let's make it simple. Okay. What made you get into this industry? Okay. How long have you been in it? And how long have you been in this location? Simple. Right. Got it? Say less. How long have you been Don't, in this Don't know. Say less. Okay. <laughs> okay. Wait, so, so industry? So you kept repeating. Okay. All right. Let it get the motherfuckers. Y'all need cue cards. Standing back there, y'all. It's y'all fault. What made you get it? Y'all know these are men. This is this is unfair to them. Both sides don't work. Yeah. Only one. Y'all right. know better than to expect this from these men. This is y'all's fault. I understand. I understand, but it's, it's me. It ain't got nothing to do with it. I'm a pimp. This ain't got nothing to do with that. It's just the listen. It's the it's the it's that energy. They they not ready. You just got That's true. I'm on. I'm this, just having you're fun not, with you're it. You're leaning. I'm leaning because I didn't you know where I was tall, sitting. And you leaning like the leaning tower. I should like lean it for a four foot tall. No, that tower is like so, 22 feet tall. So how long you been <laughs> 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 That's how you talking to me. Who the fuck you went to? There we go. How long you been in the industry? What made you get into the industry? I can't write. I can't write all of them. You'll start reading up all of them. Okay. <laughs> she got it. Flip. 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 One at a time. How long you been in the industry? What made you get into this industry and, and how, how long you been in this location? location. I got it. Go. But you ain't got to ask all three one time. <laughs> we're going to play tennis. That, that, that's how he going to hit first. Y'all look yeah, at right, tennis. Okay. So we got to start that when yours all over again? You got to start this <laughs> way. <laughs> so, so check this out. If you want, we'll start with you. How long have you been here? No, we shall. We got to make sure you say that clearly and slowly. Boom. Yes, ma'am. Okay, we ready? Y'all need to laugh for a minute? No, we're good. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Relax, face. How does my nose look? Do I need that powder? Red, then I'm Yeah, stay like that. Five, four. All right, on this segment of Rip Your Swag. What did you lean it for? Somebody questioned. You can't even sit up straight. Just kiss your legs. I like the lean. Don't. Sit on the table like serious then. No, yeah. no ass cheeks. He's like that little bird. Good little bird. Like <laughs> <laughs> Real. I didn't say it. Not too much. Okay. <laughs> Five, four. All right. No, on this segment, I'm, right. I'm so sick of you. I'm going to tie you to the goddamn chair. <laughs> Get over <laughs> <on> there. <desk>. Stop. <laughs> you don't even need so, to move. What's the I difference from him. him being like this He's and me leaning We're up. just going to work on three questions with you. <laughs> you do and this leaning. <laughs> All right. There is no need. Let's okay. go. Five. How long you been in the fucking industry? A long fucking time. <laughs> I started <laughs> eight, <laughs> eight, <laughs> like seven years old. It wasn't your turn He ready. He knows his question. You didn't see the call. Let him have the question. <laughs> okay, ready? <laughs> re Thanks for tuning in. We're here now uh, to basically get a background on Chef to find out, like, where she's from. So, Chef, are you from the Dallas area? I was born in Jersey, but I was raised here in Dallas. <laughs> Wait a minute. What the heck? Supposed to be looking at her. Look at the show. I'm not leaning. <laughs> <laughs> you can't look at her. <laughs> Your head works, remember? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, look. Whoa. It worked. Whoa. It worked. Look at she. You, she a chiropractor. <laughs> Okay, but no, I just didn't want to lean and stuff, so I was just like, much well, no, I just wanted to be like, because if I start turning stuff, I'm a, Pooch, I Pooch, talk, Pooch, I talk, Pooch, be natural. Okay, you want to but that's what I'm saying, I talk, and when I talk, I'm going to be more like, hey, so, you know, say blah, blah, that's blah, different. whatever. You're leaning like she can't see you in the camera, okay, and it's noticeable. Right but <laughs> if I started talking, I'm going to be leaning anyway and stuff for that. That's what I'm saying, like, do what feels natural. We'll, yeah, we'll see how that looks. Okay. Do what feels natural. And we'll you do you, booty. You do you. Yeah. No, I didn't say do that. Well, it's natural. natural. Well, it is not natural. <laughs> 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 All right. 
Bye. So, hold on. So, hold on, hold on, hold on. So, we already got the tape where we do the introduction and stuff, whatever. Yes. All we need to do now is ask the question where she's from. Right. Or start with your question. Start with your question. Okay. She's going to answer it. I am. Oh, really? Is that what happened? And out loud. Let's go. All right. <laughs> Let's go. Five, four, three. You did very good. Yeah, it's our kids. I just had to get all the bullshit out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a lot of pressure. Yeah, we're getting into the meat of it. The second part, we want to know about the food. Alicia, what is the food? Look, look at her. Yeah, right. She's ducking down, trying to work that same. <laughs> she's like, she goes like this. <laughs> What's my third blush? All right, so we're back with Chef Radu. Um, how long have you been at this location? <laughs> <laughs> I got it out and then. <laughs> I'm sorry. She, she's her fault. You gotta turn around. She start doing it. She she start doing the paper like. I'm sorry. <laughs> okay. I'm sorry. I'll be good. All right, now we're back with Chef. Breathe. Is it that bad? Right, is, is it, it that bad? Is it that yes. bad? You can't win. You look like we can help you hostage over here. Ain't no black guys um, mouth sign we'll, over here. Come down. We'll switch. We'll switch. Yeah, let me start. It. Let me start. <laughs> it. <laughs> no, push through. Push through, sis. She already said she wasn't oh helping. Oh, oh, you are turning blood red. Okay, so we're back with Chef Radu. Um, shit, I forgot my question. <laughs> Are you serious? I'm not kidding. He's just like, yeah. okay. tell me. Hey, tell me. Hey, He's looking at me like, help, help, help. No, I ain't gonna help you. <laughs> You're right. still, you're, it'd be funny if you'd be like, so, so where, how long? Do you, <laughs> the question for you. <laughs> this man right. finna murder right. your food. Like so <laughs> if we're going to make it kind of funny, Please so uh, we're yeah. back with Chef Radu. As you can see, my cold's up here. Uh, Chef, I, how long you been? Just, you know, play in it. Right. Play. So we're back with you Chef Radu. I like that. <laughs> I like that lady. You I like that. I like that. You prepared to be like, <laughs> Pull turn. Pull. What kept you going? You know, let's talk about your future. Where do you see yourself? Just rose out there. Where can people find you? However you want to see it, rough or soft or happy. Put a little push behind it. Just put a push behind it. Okay. I gotta go wash my pooch. Go wash your pooch. One on the menu too. <laughs> She's smelling it. <laughs> she smelled your food. Like really smelled like mm, the aroma. Okay. <laughs> yes, ma'am. He's gonna he's gonna wrap it up with the how you rep your swag, right? right. Yeah. And then you remember how you always ask our our interviewees, you know, what is kept you going through all the adverse? What are your future plans? What do you have to say? What advice do you use from the viewers? I got you. And then you gonna, Ryan, do you, you know, you got one job. Dang! <laughs> I, got yeah. the, I got this part done. One job. <laughs> Don't talk and about then say you're gonna close it out. All right. You know, thank you, Chef Radu, for Chef, you want your food, man. Check out the food. All right. Right. Wash your pooch before you put it in your mouth. She be trying. She be trying to come back so hard and it just crumbles down. Self control. See, that's the warning I was talking about. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Why are you leaning? I'm trying to make you sure the pooch is clean. You got your mustache. <laughs> 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 Alright, 
Tesla pisses me off when the camera's not going, I'm good. But whenever it's going, I'm like. <laughs> oh, just like they're watching me. They're watching me. They're watching me. <laughs> Five. Four. She four, finished eating. 